everyone has sex, everyone has sex. And that's why I talk about it so much because I know when I'm speaking about it with my disability, I know everyone's listening because the guys are sitting there thinking, this chick can't feel a vagina and she's bragging about the sex and my missus is complaining. So let me listen to what she has to say. And they are, they're listening. Hey, I'm Christina Bethulkis and I'm a 27, wow, did I say 25? Mentalities at 25. Bing bong, 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 bong. <laughs> I'm a 27 year old from Barmara, uh, South Australia. So it's a rural uh, country town in the Riverland. And I am a T5 paraplegic as of nearly four years ago. So I jumped a metal ramp that has a 55 foot gap. So I was about probably 10 metres in the sky, 14 metre gap onto a, de- a dirt landing, didn't quite make it. No, I, I did, but like the back the back wheel hit the top of the deck, which obviously must have shocked me because as I, it's done, it's flung my legs upwards. I've done a full scorpion when I've landed next to my bike on my head, so my butt hit my head and I snapped in half. Getting back into the sex scene, I guess, after my accident was actually probably one of the most difficult things that I had to face. It was more like having to go on a like self-love journey first before I was even ready to like have sex with someone again. Like one time I met up with a guy and I purposely made sure I didn't shave downstairs. So that was like my cock blocker because I was like, no, I'm not ready for it. I'm not prepared. I haven't done my bow days. I haven't emptied. So I was just like, nah, don't shave because that means you will not let him see your vagina. I still gave him a head job, but anyways. <laughs> Since my accident, I expressed how important a good sex life is because you can have complete feeling and still have the most pointless, unenjoyable sex there is. You can still finish off, you can get the vibrator and finish yourself off, but you've done it while he's... And I, I could go on forever with this. So I, when I had my injury, I didn't really think of sex as like, well, I wasn't ever excited about sex. It wasn't exciting before my injury, well, with my ex and not now. Um, once I broke up with him, I was like, this is when I was like, all right, how am I supposed to do this with someone new? I didn't know. And obviously I feel like I'm a little bit lucky in the sense of being a female in this situation because guys usually kind of take the lead. But I came from somewhere like I would take the lead. So I had to just let myself let them take the lead and then just trying to figure out like that, asking me questions. I'm like, I don't even know. So it was all like, I don't know, test test trial. And then I actually went through a hoe phase, as I claimed, and slept with a few people because I was like, Christina, the only way you're going to get this done is testing it out and you can't do it with one guy because every guy's different. So I went through like about six guys in like the first six months. And um, then I was like, okay, this works. This works. And so now I know what works. I'm on a dick detox at the moment, as I say. Um, so... But I know, I know what I want and I know what the guy needs to do and I know how important, like, the communication is when without having feeling how much enjoyable sex can be. Like, so I thank my injury for that because my sex life is better than it was before I was paralysed. Like, I just was thinking, like, I was literally just searching on Instagram, like, I just wanted to find people with disabilities that were into things that I was into because I had I knew instantly Bruce Cook, a guy that used to do freestyle as well and do backflips paralysed. So I'd find his page or I'd find others. I'm like, I just wanted, I needed to see what I could do. I Like, I, I needed that. So when I was in rehab, I was like, I'm going to dedicate my life to showing anyone. Like, all I could think of is if touch wood, my mate or someone or someone young gets paralysed, I just want someone to be like, go to Christina's profile and see what you can do just to give people, not hope, because it's everyone's got hope, but, like, it's just more so, like, look, you can do it. Like, it's, it's right here in front of you. And I also want other people that aren't disabled to be more aware of how much we can do it. Not to, yeah, put us in a little box of, like, oh, we don't know... Because when you don't know something, when you don't know about an uh, injury or a disability, you kind of stay away from it. Like So people will avoid asking these because it's like you'd rather not know the unknown. But when you get comfortable with something and you know everything about something, I feel like more disabled people will be included in things. Does that make sense? I'm not too sure. <laughs>
Are you nervous? Nah. Huh? Care on the go. <laughs> With the drifting, actually, I've found like in SA, I think I know three. Um, in Queensland, there's two. In America, there's one. Uh, there's actually a lot because. Like and I think that's why I drive all the time. Like I drive to, I've driven to Queensland three times this year. I love driving because it's like something that we can do that makes us feel like we're just as able as anyone else on the road. And I feel like the motorsport community. I think that's what the men love it because they get in and they can do burnouts. They can drift. They can do everything. There's a guy that has no arms and drifts with his foot. Like so. There's. I, th I feel like it's the most in inclusive sport there is to feel like you're actually at the same level as everyone else you're competing with. Anything else, um, like wheelchair basketball, obviously you're, you're adjusting the sport. It's not the same. And everyone, everyone tells me to go to the Olympics and do basketball. I'm like, no, it's not the same. Um, but with drifting, you're actually doing the exact same movements as everyone else and you're at the same level. You're not at a disadvantage. Well, you are, but, like, you, you can still keep up with the big boys. I... Personally, the reason I went on this show and did it, same reason I'm on social media being an advocate, well, trying to advocate as much as possible, is because I'm a strong believer of unless you see someone do something, people think it's impossible. So until someone flies a plane for the first time, or still, until someone does the first backflip on a dirt bike, everyone thinks it's impossible. So I want to be that example and I want to be on television and giving that like, oh, there's a really horny chick on TV Disabled people get horny, you know what I mean? So it has to start from somewhere and that's why it was so important for me to go on there. If you're someone that doesn't think a disabled person can be sexy or sexual, you need to come on a date with me so I can prove you otherwise.